1 Samuel chapter 7. We'll begin reading in verse number 3. The Bible says, And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If ye do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods and asterisk from among you, and prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only, and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Ashtoreth and serve the Lord only. And Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray for you unto the Lord. And they gathered together to Mizpah and drew water and poured it out before the Lord and fasted on that day and said there, We have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mizpah. And when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together to Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. And the children of Israel said to Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord uh, our God for us, that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. Uh, and Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it as a burnt offering holy unto the Lord. Uh, and Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder, on that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them and they were smitten before Israel and all the men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came unto Bethkar then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shin and called the name of it Ebenezer saying hitherto hath the Lord helped us so the Philistines were subdued and they came no more into the coast of Israel, and the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. We praise you for your goodness. We're thankful one taste of you. We lose all desire for the things of the world. Lord, the world can never satisfy like you do. The Lord can never sustain like you do. The, Lord, uh, the world can never soothe like you do. Lord, we certainly know the world can't save because only you do. And God, we bless you and praise you. We thank you for the good singing. We thank you for the good testimonies. Thank you for being a good God. And I pray for the next few minutes you'd use this unworthy vessel. I pray your people would be helped and encouraged. I know we had a holiday yesterday, but still folks have been busy with the hustle and bustle of the world. But they find themselves in the house of God tonight, need some help. We know our help cometh from the Lord. Lord, without you, we can do nothing. So, Father, I pray that uh, for the next few minutes you'd hedge us in, you'd clear our minds, uh, you'd challenge our hearts, uh, and, God, you'd certainly do a work in our souls, uh, that, Lord, when we leave, that this world could take note that we'd been with Jesus. Lord, I certainly pray if there's anybody here tonight unsaved, tonight would be the night of their salvation. Father, bless, have your will and way. Well, thank you for it, for it's in the holy name of Jesus we ask these things. Amen and amen. If you read uh, the chapter before, you'll find that um, if you go back to chapter 4, you'll even find uh, the Philistines had fought against Israel. The Philistines took the Ark of the Covenant away from Israel, and the Philistines had it in their land, uh, and God struck the Philistines uh, and the power of the ark was so strong and how it struck them, uh, they couldn't wait to get rid of it. Uh, and we find that uh, uh, in the chapter before that they brought it and it showed as a sign that God uh, 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 was uh, not going to harm them. Uh, 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 what God did in the chapter before, it shows that they were glad to get rid of the ark uh, and uh, uh, the Israelites came uh, and they brought it, uh, back the ark, but they didn't bring it all the way back to Jerusalem. Uh, uh, they stopped at a place uh, where Joshua the Bishamite was, and they left it there. Uh, 
And we find in chapter 7, verse number 2, it says, And it came to pass while the ark abode in Kirch at Jerem, that the time was long, for it was 20 years, and all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. Now we find that they did not have the ark in Israel for 20 years, long time. Can you imagine not having the power of God around you for 20 years? 20 years. You'd have thought somebody said, we need God. And the ark wasn't God, but the ark represented the power and the presence of God in Israel. But they left it for 20 years. The Bible said a long time. Well, what happens over that long time is the same thing that would happen in your life if you just got away from preaching for a while. I don't know about you, but I need preaching. That's why I went to that meeting last week, just sit and hear some preaching. Mm, can I say that I enjoy studying and being the preacher, but I need preaching. And you need preaching. God not only chose the foolishness of preaching to save them that would believe uh, but God chose preaching for believers to keep them on the straight and narrow. Without preaching and left to your own conceits, you'd start doing worldly things. You'd start justifying worldly things in your life. You would uh, uh, get to the point where you'd think you was okay being worldly. We need preaching. So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Without preaching, your faith dwindles. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. Hmm? The Bible says, For him to know to do good, doeth it not to him, it is sin. You need preaching to know what sin is, so you don't do it. So it's been a long time. Well, Israel gets pretty wicked. I want you to notice a few things. Before we get to the thought tonight, I want you to notice, first of all, there becomes a revival in Israel. Look at verse 3 again. And Samuel spoke unto all the house of Israel. Thank God for a man of God. Amen. Saying, if you do return unto the Lord with all your hearts. By the way, you can't serve the God with a half heart. That's what's wrong with a lot of our Baptist churches. Why folks are at church, they want to hear from heaven, they want to serve God. But when they get away from church... They go back to their lives, and God's nowhere in their mind. You're a half-hearted Christian. Can I say a half-hearted Christian's a miserable Christian? You don't have the joy of the Lord, because you're not all in. That's what's wrong with a lot of people. That's why some of you are looking at me like a... Yeah, I wish I had a mirror. You'd see that look. Well, but it goes on to say... If you're going to serve God with all your heart, then put away your strange gods and astereth from among you and prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only, and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Astrith and serve the Lord only. Uh, we see revival comes to Israel. Uh, the man of God tells them you need to put away your strange gods uh, and Astrith. Uh, and they did that. Uh, you say, who is Astrith? Uh, Astrith was the female goddess that they worshipped, uh, which is commonly known uh, as mother-child worship. Uh, and can I say, she's known uh, as many names in the Bible. Uh, uh, the first name she's known at is Semiramis, uh, 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 the wife of Nimrod. Uh, and uh, she uh, became uh, with child after Nimrod dies. Uh, and uh, what would they would have done to her was take her out and stone her, because that's what they did back then. Uh, now we just put them on welfare. Uh, back then they would stone them. Uh, 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 but uh, she came up with this big story uh, how uh, uh, Nimrod had visited her from the heavens uh, and uh, impregnated her. Uh, and 
and the child she bore, uh, 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 Tamas, uh, uh, was uh, supernaturally induced. Uh, well, we know from Genesis 3.15 uh, that the Lord gave the first promise of the Lord Jesus coming to this world uh, when he told Satan uh, that uh, he would bruise the seed of the woman uh, uh, as heel, but the uh, seed of the woman would bruise his head. Uh, and from then on it was prophesied uh, uh, that the Lord was going to send the Redeemer through a woman and can I say uh, uh, the devil's crafty so he comes up with this lie uh, and starting in Genesis chapter 10 uh, unto this day uh, there's been mother child worship in the world uh, she was Semiramis she's Astrith she's known as the queen of heaven you'll find her mention that that is in uh, 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 Jeremiah and that always strikes me because uh, when you go through Orlando there's a huge so called church uh, called uh, 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 the queen of the universe can I say uh, in the apostle Paul's day at Ephesus she was called Diana today she's called Mary all those statues you see outside those Catholic churches uh, supposedly of Mary holding uh, 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 the blessed child uh, that's Semiramis. Mary is not to be worshipped. Mary was uh, selected of all the women. She was blessed uh, uh, to be the one that God would use to send uh, the Lord Jesus through. But Mary had to get saved the same way we had to get saved. Can I say Mary gave one commandment in the Scriptures, John 2, 5. Whatsoever he saith, you do it. Mm, that's pretty good advice. But nowhere else do you find Mary mentioned where you're to elevate her. We're not to pray to Mary. We're not to seek Mary. You can pray to Mary till the cows come home. You can go and get your prayers heard. Uh, you know what the Bible said? We're to pray in Jesus' name. Uh, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, not by Mary. So they were serving a goddess who they were praying to that couldn't help them. By the way, there's nothing new under the sun. The devil just keeps putting lipstick on a pig, but he keeps dressing it up in a different way. Mm. They put away all the gods of Balaam, all the false gods. They put away Asherah. Revival comes to Israel. I say hallelujah. Can I say revival would come to our church if you start putting your little idols away. You say, I don't pray to an idol, but if an idol keeps you away from reading the Bible and keeps you away from praying, keeps you away from church, anything comes between you and God's an idol. You get rid of them idols, we would have revival. That's good preaching right there, preacher. Uh, so I don't have any idols. Well, let me challenge you. This my notes. Well, let me speak to Brother Don. He's a former Catholic. You say, what is he now? Saved. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah, glory. Huh? <laughs> I don't have any idols. Isn't it amazing? That's all Catholic churches have. You go in, a oh man, that's got a lot of statues and all. You say, I have no idols. But that little thing you got, you leave out there in the car, it's got a screen on it, and you're on that thing. On. That's one thing if you use it for work. And it's okay to have one. There's blessing and cursing and everything. But if you're on that thing eight, nine, ten hours a day, watching videos of ducks splashing around in the water or something, looking up old classmates all the time, old boyfriends or girlfriends all the time, getting real quiet. And you're not praying and seeking God's face and searching the scriptures eight hours a day, that thing becomes an idol. By the way, you can get Bible apps. I got a few on my phone, and you can read the Bible on your phone. But most of you aren't reading the Bible on your phone eight hours a day. Hmm? I've got a great search engine on my phone. I use it a lot. I'm glad to report. I don't use Facebook at all. Much as I preached against it, if I ever got one, y'all stoned me. <laughs> I'm just saying people got idols. And can I say there's nothing wrong with Facebook? As long as you put your face in the book more than you put your face on Facebook. And I just never got over and then got a hold of, I'm going to the restaurant now. I'm going to eat now. Look at what I'm eating. I'm going to the bathroom now. 
Let me help you something. You're not that important. People aren't that interested. That is a self thing. You're trying to get yourself more self-esteem. That's why you've got to look and see how many likes you got. You know the best place you can get self-esteem? On your knees, talking to God, and getting in the book and God telling you how much He loves you and how accepted you are in the Beloved and how sweet you are to Him when you pray to Him and walk with Him. Oh, that's more important than somebody you never met telling you they like you. Hmm. Well, none of that's in my notes. You're welcome. It didn't cost you anything. But I'm telling you, revival happened. And revival happened when they responded to preaching and they changed. Can I say revival will never happen till we respond to preaching and we change. Hmm? When it goes in one ear and out the other, next time you pray, God's not going to, he's going to let go in one ear and out the other. You're not interested in what he has to say. He's not interested in what you have to say. Not till he hears, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. They responded to the message and they changed. That's revival. Turning from the direction they were going. But notice something else. After revival, there's repentance. Now hang with me. I'm going somewhere. God showed me this, and I know this will be a real help to you. Look at verse 6. And they gathered together at Mizpah and drew water and poured it out before the Lord and fasted on that day and said, We have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel, Mizpah. He said, Preacher, you already said they had revival. They did. They changed and responded to the message. They put away their gods, their idols. And then they came to the place that he appointed for them to come. And can I say, now they repent. They repent because they realize why they needed to change. See, you can come to church, you can hear a message... Uh, you can leave out of here and say, I'm going to do what that message does, and you do it, uh, and you've changed, uh, and you've got revived, uh, but there's still a need of repentance for why you needed to change in the first place. And there's a lot of folks, they never repent. Oh, I realize the error of my doings, Lord. Uh, preacher, I'm sorry, I, did, I, I, I didn't know what I was doing. But then they never repent of it. Here, after they got rid of their idols, they realized why they needed to get rid of their idols. And they drew out water, and they poured it out to the Lord. I imagine it was hot there in the desert. And they poured the water out to the Lord as an offering to the Lord, and they fasted that day, and they repented of the sin that caused them to have to be revived in the first place. You know what I'm saying? We'd see God do a lot more in our churches if we truly repent. We'd realize why we need to repent. You see, if I preach against the phone and you put the phone away because I preached of it, but you didn't repent for why you had to, to put it away in the first place, you really haven't got any farther with God. Hmm? Yep, I knew that'd go real good. But it's true. I know I'm right. I'm preaching the Bible. They got revived. Then they repented. Amen. Now notice, as a result, there's a raid. We find the Philistines find out there in Mizpah, verse 7, when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together at Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. Uh, can I say, uh, it's been a long time. Uh, they haven't seen or heard of the God of Israel. Uh, remember, they were afraid uh, and got rid of the ark, uh, but Israel's not had the power of God, so they're not afraid. Uh, now there's an assault, there's an invasion. Why? Uh, because they've got right with God, the enemy shows up. Uh, and friend, when you make up your mind, you're going to serve God, live for God. Uh, mark her down, Slewfoot's going to show up. Uh, he wants to have you back in the same shape you used to be. Uh, he's going to start tempting you with the things that got you there. Uh, but they've repented uh, and now they've said we need God on our side. Uh, somebody go get the ark. Hmm? 
See, the church has been so long since the church has had power with God, the world's not afraid of the church. And I promise you, if we get revived and start getting right with God and God starts breathing on the church, the world's going to show up and try to put a stop to us. But if God be for us, who can be against us? Notice the result of the enemy showing up. First of all, supplication was made. Verse number 8, the children of Israel and, uh, and uh, of Israel said to Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, and that he save us out of the hands of the Philistine. See, they realize they don't have any hope now without God. Before they'd been praying to Astrid. Now supplications made. They asked the man of God to get a hold of God on their behalf. We find supplications made. Verse number 9, sacrifices made. He offered a suckling lamb as a burnt offering uh, unto the Lord. Uh, he's crying unto the Lord. He's offering a sacrifice unto the Lord. Uh, listen, uh, 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 when the enemy uh, begins to taunt and everything, the best thing you can do is run to the Lord uh, and begin to cry unto the Lord uh, and just lay yourself down before the Lord and watch what the Lord does next. See what happens, a supernatural event occurs. Look at verse number 10. The Bible says, and, Samuel was offering up as, and as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines uh, and discomfited them, uh, 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 and they were smitten before Israel. Isn't it amazing? Uh, the enemy shows up. The enemy's got greater numbers. The enemy's got a greater force. They show up to battle. And all it took was a little thunder. Yeah. Amen. Mm. By the way, I have read in the scriptures where his voice is as many thunderings. Yeah. Yes, the Lord just happened to speak a word. Don't know what it was, uh, but it thundered. And it thundered so much it disconfitted the Philistines. They got slapped crazy. They didn't know what was going on. Uh, they're running against each other, slaying each other, trying to get away. Uh, they, uh, they don't know what's happening. I'll tell you what happened. God showed up. Uh, and God shows up in the midst of our enemy. Uh, our enemy loses all sight of us. Uh, our enemy gets discomfited. Uh, and God just doesn't work. Uh, uh, what happened after that? A slaughter ensued. Uh, and the Israelites chased the Philistines uh, and got the slaying Philistines everywhere uh, hey uh, oh it takes a little God in the camp uh, and those that are timid now become bold uh, those that once were out now get in uh, and God does the work in his people uh, matter of fact the Bible said the Philistine didn't even come back to Israel as long as Samuel was alive and then notice if you will a stone is placed look at verse number 12 then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shin and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. I don't have time to get into the typology right here, but he puts the stone in the valley between two hillsides. Hmm. Can I say, in every one of our valleys there's a stone, friend. He called that stone Ebenezer. Now, I want to preach on this thought for just a minute. Just got three points. I want to preach on the embracing of Ebenezer. The embracing of Ebenezer. That stone is so important. You see, Ebenezer means the stone of help. Verse 12 says, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. That's why he called it Ebenezer. That's what it meant. Uh, 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 and he put that stone there for a specific reason. Uh, 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 that stone says, The Lord hath helped us. Uh, and my dear friends, it's one thing. Uh, if a brother or sister helps you. It's one thing if the preacher helps you. It's one thing if an evangelist helps you. It's one thing uh, if a co-worker helps you. Uh, but it's a whole different thing uh, if God helps you. Uh, and when God helps you, you ought to not soon get over that. Uh, it ought to change you from this point forward uh, that God uh, left glory, uh, showed up in my valley, uh, and help me when nobody else really could. Uh, can I say? It's a stone of help. 
The psalmist said in Psalms 28, 7, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in Him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise Him. When the Lord shows up and helps you, you get a song of praise. You find strength and faith you never had before. Psalms 46, 1, the Bible says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. He doesn't help you when you're on the mountaintop. You don't need help. What when you're in trouble? Hey, and nobody else is going to help you. God shows up and helps you. Psalms 116 and 6, the Bible says, The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. Hey, he's nigh them of a broken heart uh, and save us such of a contrite spirit. Uh, I'm glad uh, when we get low uh, and there is no way out, uh, he shows up uh, and helps us uh, and makes a way out. Uh, Psalms 121, uh, I love this verse. Uh, verse 1, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills while I'm in the valley. Uh, from whence cometh my help? Uh, my help cometh from the Lord, uh, which made heaven and earth. Uh, he's my helper. Uh, we need to embrace our Ebenezer, uh, our stone of help. Uh, we need to embrace the helper tonight. Uh, the Hebrew writer wrote, Hebrew 4.16, uh, Let us come boldly into the throne of grace, uh, that we may obtain mercy uh, and find grace to help uh, in time of need. Uh, we need to embrace our help. Too many times we embrace the internet. We embrace Dr. Spock or the wrong Dr. Phil. We don't embrace the stone of our help. And the reason being is we haven't placed a stone. See, when God's helped you, you need a stone. Because somewhere down in the road, you're going to need help again. And you've got to run back to that Ebenezer. Because that Ebenezer is where you find true help. Can I say, our Ebenezer is a memorial stone. Lamentations 3, verse 21, my friend Jeremiah wrote this. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Uh, uh, Jeremiah is writing, uh, when Israel's been taken captivity of uh, in Babylon and he's lamenting and he's weeping because uh, Israel didn't heed his preaching uh, and he's at a low place in his life uh, but he said this I recall to my mind uh, he remembered uh, the Lord's his helper uh, and he embraced the Ebenezer in his life uh, hey uh, we need a memorial stone uh, when God gives you victory uh, you need to plant a stone in your mind uh, because you're going to be in a battle again someday. And when you're in that battle, uh, you got to remember that Ebenezer. Uh, and how God helped you days gone by. Uh, how he's the same today, yesterday, forevermore. Uh, and God, it's of his mercies. We're not consumed. Uh, he faileth not. Uh, and i got to run back to that memorial stone, that Ebenezer. Uh, i got to recall in my mind the victory that is available in him. Uh, can I say? In Jonah chapter 2, verse number 7, Jonah said, When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer came in unto thee, into thy holy temple. Uh, when Jonah's in the belly of that fish, uh, that whale, uh, all those acids from that fish is attacking him. Uh, he said uh, that he was in the belly of hell. Uh, he thought he was dying for sure. Uh, but he said, I remember the Lord. Uh, friend, you may feel like all hell's come against you uh, and all darkness and there is no hope. Uh, but you got to go back to that Ebenezer stone. Uh, you got to plant it hard in your mind uh, so you can remember the great hand of the Lord. Uh, and when he remembered the Lord, uh, the Lord heard his prayer uh, and he was delivered. Uh, and I say in Deuteronomy 8, 18, 
The Bible says this, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. Can I say, you need a memorial stone. You need it planted deep in the recesses of your mind. You've heard me tell you uh, until uh, you don't want to hear it again, but I'm going to tell you again anyway. Our battles are in our mind. The devil can't get your soul. Your soul sealed. Right. Your soul saved. Your soul uh, is already in heaven. You don't understand that yet. We're in our uh, 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 practical right now, but our position's in Christ Jesus. We're already seated in heavenly places uh, in Christ Jesus. Uh, and when we lay off this body of clay, our practical's going to catch up with our positional, uh, and we'll be with the Lord to be absent uh, from the bodies to be present with the Lord. Uh, but hey, uh, uh, there's coming a day uh, when the devil's going to attack your mind again because yeah. your mind's not saved your flesh certainly isn't saved but your mind's not saved right. he can cut your flesh and your flesh will heal but those things he shows in your mind if you give them too much attention they'll run that, that puppy will run Amen. and it'll take you far away from the center of God's will right. yeah. it'll attack you in your mind He'll cause you to doubt. He'll cause you to distrust. He'll cause you all kinds of problems because he'll attack on those things your mind likes to hear. Hmm? No wonder Solomon said, Vanity, vanity, all is vanity. But that's what the devil tempts you with. Vain things. That's why deep down in the recesses of your mind, you need an Ebenezer. You need a memorial stone. You need something that you can recall to your memory when those temptations come to your mind, when those thoughts come to your mind, uh, when those traps come to your mind. Uh, you can say, the Lord is my helper. Uh, you need to embrace your Ebenezer. You need a memorial stone. Can I say our Ebenezer is also a marker? It's a marker. Proverbs twenty two twenty eight says, Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. Jeremiah 6, 16 says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths, uh, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. Uh, but they said, We will not walk therein. Can I say it's a marker? It's something that you run by on a regular occasion uh, to make certain you keep uh, everything in order. Uh, when they crossed over into Canaan land, they told them to set up... Uh, uh, those memorials, those markers, those 12 stones, uh, and to run your children and future generations by them. When they say, what meaneth these stones? Uh, you could tell them the Lord. Uh, he delivered us into this land and gave us this land. Uh, it was a marker. Uh, and that marker uh, is to show forth to others uh, the goodness of God. Uh, and can I say, uh, we got to have some markers, some Ebenezer's in our lives. Uh, one of them is the old time way. Uh, thank God for the old time way. It's a marker. Uh, these young kids need to see there's a God worth worshiping. Uh, and he doesn't come with a rock band and smoke and lights. Uh, he comes through old time preaching. Uh, preaching still gets the job done. Uh, there's too many churches going by dramas uh, and going by ear tickling. Uh, God wants preachers to stand up uh, with a backbone uh, uh, like a saw log uh, and preach what thus saith the Lord. Uh, and uh, the next generation needs to know uh, God isn't looking for a newfangled way. Uh, it's the old way. Uh, that's the good way. Uh, you'll find rest for your soul. Uh, listen, you say, preacher, why are you preaching like that? Uh, that's the only way I know that works. Uh, there's an Ebenezer in my life. Uh, there's a marker. I've seen God do too much. Uh, and hey, we need old time preaching. Uh, we need old time praising and worshiping the Lord. Uh, folks waving their hands. Uh, folks testifying to the goodness of God. Uh, folks telling folks how good God's been. It's all right to get excited being in church. It's a marker. Uh, mm. And down there, the Reds are finally winning some games. You go down there to the stadium, if you can get in, people shouting and hooping and hollering, having a time over a baseball. 
And we come talking about the Lord of glory saved our never dying souls and we sit on our hands like, you need some markers in your life. Sure. Listen, I come up in a generation where everybody smoked. Everybody smoked and it was cool to smoke. All the Hollywood smoked. All the politicians smoked. Down the country, a lot of the preachers smoked. Everybody smoked. Uh, not knowing there was a chemical in them cigarettes called nicotine that attacked your brain and made you addicted. But it's cool to smoke. But invariably, if mama smoked, which probably that's what stunted her growth, you know, she's only four foot tall. She'd throw away them lucky strikes. She might have been 5'2". Who knows? But hey, but invariably, quit laughing, Lisa. Isn't that funny, huh? Invariably, she'd be lighting one up. And she'd look at you and say, don't you ever smoke. These things are bad for you. But you watch Mama light up enough, all of a sudden, your buddy, Aiden, and you are you get to play a little basketball and he's got a pack with you need to try one of these and you know well, if it's good enough for mama it's good enough for me for long you're smoking and then God blesses you to get a wife I can't believe it but he does and you have a child and you say don't, don't start these cigarettes they're bad for you say mama and daddy it's not what you say it's what you do that speaks to your children and you can tell them they need to come to church. And you can tell them that uh, worship's good. But, but if you never worship, uh, you just come and sit like a knot on the log. Uh, they're never going to worship because uh, it's not good enough for mom and daddy. Uh, and if they never uh, 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 see you praying at home, they're never going to pray. Uh, and if after church all you do is talk about people, guess what they're going to do? Talk about people. Uh, hey, uh, you need to have some markers in your life. Uh, as an Ebenezer say, we go to church because uh, we got to worship the Lord because he's been good to us. Uh, and when they see it at home, uh, when they come to church, it'll be natural. Uh, but if they never see it in your life, don't you expect to see it in their life? It takes the hand of God to do something in a child's life that the parents never got involved in. Mm. And I say, need old time preaching and praising the Lord, old time praying. I remember some of them old timers, they didn't have much of an education. And they certainly didn't know anything about the gap theory. They didn't know what a mid tribber was. Some of you don't. One thing they knew, they knew how to pray. They knew how to get a hold and grab a hold of the horns of the altar. And stay there till God spoke peace to their soul. They'd get up early and they'd pray. They'd pray for the house of God. They'd pray for sinners to be saved. They'd pray for the preacher to get the message from God. They'd come to church expecting God to do something because they'd already done business with God. Uh, some of you all don't even pray when you're at church. It's time to pray. You bow your head, but you ain't praying. When it's the invitation time. Might as well just hit this while I'm here and making everybody mad. The invitation time is not a time to gather up your stuff and get ready to go to the restaurant. That's the most solemn part of the service. And all it takes is for somebody to move out of order and a sinner sitting by, the devil point that out. The invitation time is a time to do business with God. You ought to be praying. If you don't go to the altar, you ought to still be praying. God will touch some sinner's heart. God help some weary saint of God. God do a work around here. Hey, your children need to know you've got a prayer life. Amen. That's right. hmm. That Ebenezer stone, we need to embrace it for a memorial. To remember, he's been our helper. But also as a marker. You need to set up some markers in your life. Hey, this is why we do what we do. His name is Jesus. Amen. You need to have some markers in your life. By the way, your family ought to know your markers. Why don't you go out to the bars? Well, I got a marker. His name is Jesus. Right. Jesus don't go to the bars and neither do I because right. he lives in me. Right. Huh? 
Well, we want to come and visit on Sunday. Wonderful. You can go to church with us. Well, won't you stay home? No, no, no. See, we got a marker. His name is Jesus. Sunday's the Lord's Day. We're going to go worship Jesus, huh? Huh? There's, there's folks in here tonight. They got spouses or loved ones. They don't come to church with them, but they're here faithfully because they got some markers in their life. Huh? Uh, what a blessing. That encourages this preacher. Know that there are folks who have made a stand even in their homes. Come Sunday, come Wednesday, come other times we're doing stuff around the church. The Lord's got my heart, and I got this marker in my life. His name is Jesus, and I'm going to do what Jesus wants me to do. I said I had three points. The Ebenezer Stone, it's a memorial stone. It's to be a marker in your life. You're to embrace the stone. It's the Lord's our help. But it also sends a message. That Ebenezer stone sends a message. We're still preaching about it tonight. huh? We're talking some, some almost 4,000 years later, 3,500 years. Why are we still preaching it tonight? Well, because of the message. What's the message? Well, Psalms 18.2 says, The Lord is my rock. My fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation, my high tower. Deuteronomy 32 and 4. He is the rock. His work is perfect. Uh, for all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 4. Uh, and did uh, all drink the same spiritual drink? Uh, for they drank of that spiritual rock uh, that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 10. Uh, Be it known unto you all uh, and all the people of Israel uh, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, uh, whom ye crucified, uh, whom God raised from the dead, uh, even by him doth this man stand be here before you whole. Uh, this is the stone uh, which was set at naught of you builders, uh, which has become the head of the corner. Uh, neither is there salvation in any other name, uh, for there's not other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Uh, throughout the Bible, God pictures himself as a rock you can build your life on. Can I say? The message is, he's my rock. Rock of ages cleft for me. He's my rock. He's the one my life is built on. Yeah. You build your life on anything else, it's sinking sand. Right. But you build your life on the rock when the winds come, the waves come, when the rains come, when all the pressure comes, uh, when everything uh, 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 in hell and the world itself comes against you, you'll still be able to stand, having done all to stand, stand there for why you're anchored to the rock hmm? the message is he's the rock he's the stone the chief cornerstone he's the one the church is built upon and I'm part of the church I'm with him that's the message now look again verse number 12 we'll be done verse number 12 says hitherto hath the Lord helped us that word hitherto is very interesting that word hitherto means to this time. That means from all the way back yonder to right now, the Lord has helped me. Never been a time he hadn't helped me. Even when I was lost, he was working in my life so he could help me. Huh? But it not only means that, it also means at any time. I mean, not only has he helped me from way back then to right now, but at any time that I need his help, the Lord's my helper. Hmm? He's not only... Uh, been my helper uh, to this time, but he's my helper any time I need him. He's a present help in time of need. huh? But it also means to this place. No matter what valley, no matter what trouble I'm in, no matter what I'm facing, uh, no matter how big the enemy, uh, no matter how big the trial, uh, no matter how big the storm, uh, no matter how great the odds, uh, I'm in this place, uh, and the Lord's my helper. Amen. Paul said, all men forsook me, nevertheless the Lord stood by me. No matter what you're facing, the Lord is for you, Amen. and he's our helper. And can I say, hitherto hath the Lord helped us. 
to this point he's helped us at any time he helps us and at any place he helps us because he's the Lord you need to embrace the Ebenezer you need to plant some Ebenezer stones in your memory you need to plant the Ebenezer stone as a marker in your home and in your life and you certainly certainly need to embrace the message of the Ebenezer stone the Lord hath helped us and I say without the Lord we'd all be in a mess but he's a helper and he wants to help you maybe you need help tonight he can help you maybe you just constantly struggle with things you just need to embrace the Ebenezer the reason you struggle is you're dependent on you you need to just embrace him you won't struggle anymore hmm? uh, I've had people say Lord gave me a verse that'll be enough that'll settle right there hmm? I'll never struggle again with that because the Lord gave you a verse he's your helper huh? maybe there's other things that you've got some problems with and you need some help the Lord can help you with them friend there's nothing too good too big for him he's able to help you and the real question is is will you and I be helped it all depends on what we do with the Ebenezer his name is Jesus he is our rock will you let him help you in your life let's all stand tonight Brother Clint, get a song of invitation. Maybe the Lord's helped you put away some things, but you've never gotten right about those things. Maybe tonight you need to get right about them. Maybe tonight the Lord spoke to you about something else. Maybe you see the enemy and you fear, but you never offer up supplication and get to the, to the Lord for help. Maybe spoke to you about something else. Folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for the word of God. Lord, we're thankful you that you're the living word, but you gave us the written word. We're thankful you are our rock, our high tower. Without you, Lord, oh, we'd be in a mess. Lord, I pray some folks tonight will plant that Ebenezer stone as a memorial stone. I pray homes would have an Ebenezer stone as a marker stone. People would have that Ebenezer marker in their lives. Lord, I pray we'd all glean from the message that you are a rock that you can build your life on. Now, Father, bless this invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.